This tutorial is an introduction to cost theory in the long run. It's part one in a three video playlist. The next video I will use numbers and finally on the third video I will do a calculus proof for you. So let's move on for the first video. I put labor on the x-axis and capital on the y-axis and I use K for capital and L for labor. The green line is called an ISO cost line, which means equal. So the green line is equal cost. Everywhere along this line, the producer has an equal cost with a mix of capital and labor. Total cost is equal to the rate of capital or the cost of capital times the amount of capital used plus labor costs which are the wage rate times the quantity of labor used. And to be clear I'm talking about the quantity of capital and the quantity of labor. This is typically written as C for cost is equal to R the rate of capital times capital, which is K, plus W for the wages, times labor. So I end up with C is equal to RK plus WL. I'm going to solve this equation in terms of K, which is the same as Y, solving it for Y. That K right there. So I subtract WL from both sides of the equation. That cancels out, so I pull down RK is equal to C, so I have C minus W times L is equal to RK. Now I want to get rid of that R, move it to the other side of the equation, and I do that by multiplying 1 over R, both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side I have C divided by R minus WL divided by R. This is equal to, those R's cancel out, and this is equal to K. And this is the equation for that line. Cost is constant, so a lot of times you'll see the line put over the top of the C, that's what that means. Frequently it's written as K is equal to all this instead. And let me just rewrite that part of the equation a little different so it becomes W over R times L. Now you can see that negative W over R is the slope of that line. So if I let L equal 0, I'll put 0 in for the equation right there. So labor zero, what will capital be? So that cancels out. So capital is equal to C divided by R when labor is zero, and that's the y-intercept at that point right there. So at that point right there, labor is zero, and capital the amount of capital used is the total cost divided by the cost of capital. Now, if I don't use any capital, and I have K is equal to zero, how much labor will be used. So K is zero. I'm going to determine that point right there. So I plot in zero. Zero is equal to that equation. And I solve for L. So I subtract C divided by R from both sides of the equation. Those two cancel out. So I'm left with negative C divided by R is equal to negative W divided by R times L. I want to isolate L, so I multiply both sides of the equation by negative R divided by W. And those cancel out right there. And that cancels with that R and that R. Also the negative signs cancel. 
This leaves me with C divided by W is equal to L. So when capital is zero, that point right there, it's C divided by W. It's the amount of labor used. So when capital is equal to zero, the amount of labor used is C divided by W. In other words, when capital is equal to zero, the amount of labor used is total cost divided by the amount spent on labor. And the slope of that line is equal to negative W divided by R. I can also determine the slope another way. Let me show you. If I use K1 capital, I will use L1 labor. And at that point, K2 capital and L2 labor. So I have K2 minus K1 divided by, and that's a change in capital by the way, divided by L2 minus L1, or the change in labor. And this is equal to the change in capital divided by the change in labor. As you remember, rise over run. This can be written as now, or the slope of the line is, negative change in capital divided by change in labor. This is equal to the negative W divided by R. So those are equivalent, both slope of that line. Keep this in your mind, I'll come back to this. Now, I'm gonna move on to a thing called isoquant, or equal quantity. All along this line here, the producer has equal amounts of quantity. So as they move along that line, the change in quantity is zero. So we have, we write it like that, change in quantity is equal to zero, or change in Q is equal to zero. I'm gonna add in other quantity lines. So I have Q1, Q2, Q3. And Q1, quantity of that, of that ISO quant line, is less than the quantity produced at that ISO line, or Q2, which is less than Q3. So as I move from Q1 to Q3, quantity increases. The amount of quantity produced on a single ISO quant line is equal to Quantity actually is a function of the amount of labor and amount of capital used. So I have K1 there and L1. If I reduce the amount of capital used, I need to increase the amount of labor. So if I want to keep quantity constant, I have to increase the amount of labor used from L1 to L2. And again, quantity is a function of labor and capital, and this time it's L2 and K2. So these are equal, the amount of quantity is equal for both those functions, or the change in quantity is zero. The change in capital times the marginal productivity of capital marginal product of capital, MP, is equal to the change in labor times the marginal product of labor. This means when I reduce capital, if I reduce capital, it has to be offset by that side of the equation. So these remain in equilibrium or equal each other. If I multiply both sides of the equation times one divided by marginal product of capital, those cancel out. So I have the change in capital is equal to 
the change in labor times marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital. Now I want to get change in labor over with change in capital, so I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 divided by change in labor. So those cancel out nicely, and I'm left with the change in capital divided by the change in labor is equal to marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital. And this is an important concept. Remember that the slope of the ISO cost line is equal to change in capital divided by change in labor also. This is equal to the negative W divided by R. The producer will produce at a point where all three of these things are equal, the slopes. Notice the ISO cost line, the green line, is the tangent to the ISO quantity line, which is the blue line. This relationship is also known as the marginal rate of technical substitution or M R T S marginal rate of technical substitution. Up next, in the next video, I'm going to do the same idea, but I'll use numbers, the same concept. As always, remember to share the knowledge. You can find us on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Questions and comments below like us, please like the video, and don't forget to subscribe because I'm always posting new information.